30 years ago, the Maastricht Treaty was signed between the then 12 members of the European communities, leading to the formation of the EU and eventually the Euro and Eurozone. Today, COVID is once again testing the limits of this monetary union. Due to the pandemic, Brussels suspended the EU Stability and Growth Pact, which governs its spending limits until 2023. But should these strict rules of debt and deficits come back? I think it is impossible to say that we have to abandon rules limiting uh, deficit and debt. Uh, but we have to be more flexible. Uh, and we, we have to apply these rules in a more intelligent way, considering the different situations and the different uh, and the differentiated uh, tracks uh, of, of the different countries. The Stability and Growth Pact uh, is uh, a jumble of rules uh, which is uh, unintelligible to 99.9% uh, of humanity. So what are the alternatives? I think the present set up with next generation EU offers a way forward in that countries have to pursue fiscal policies or other, especially other economic policies that are responsible, that are pro-growth, uh, that are lead to greening and digitalization of our economies. And in return for that, they get something back. Both Enrico Letta and Thomas Weiser, who were there during the difficult years of the financial crisis in 2009, say that the Eurozone was incomplete from the very beginning. I uh, once asked uh, one of the architects uh, of the Maastricht Treaty, I said, why, why did you not put in such uh, issues as banking union and uh, fiscal union, uh, etc.?" And he looked at me and he said, uh, Young man, I was younger then. He said, "Young man, we all had we had all of that in there uh, in the first drafts, but the politicians took it out. So uh, we had to live with an incomplete uh, monetary union uh, because politicians were not ready uh, to look at both sides of the deal." Both say the eurozone's future success depends on leaders' political will, as it always has. Crystal pictures here in his Brussels.